so wait so <coughs> it's the analysis analysis of deformation uh, on the basis of Flint's diagram which is also a Flint's parameter so all type of homogeneous strain can be represented graphically on one diagram known as Flint's diagram so this is known as Flint's diagram and it's very useful for uh, determining strain of a particular place at first presented by Zing and the Flint's diagram was first presented by Jing but is used for structural geology but Jing used for only mathematical purpose but mm, structure in structural geology it's used by the Flint for the first time the following are the Flint's parameter A B and C K K okay that is K A B and K the major the ratio A for uh, A of major and intermediate principal axis is plotted against ratio B intermediate and minor principal axis. So what we will see what is what is A B and C. <coughs> so the uh, Flint's parameter all types of homogeneous strain. Remember that all types of homogeneous strain can be graphically represented on a diagram known as Flint's diagram. Right, so this is the flames diagram. This is not this is okay. In the flames diagram, number of fields of different values of k are okay. Negative field of say. Where k equal to 0 is k equal to 1 is k equal to infinity so when k equal to 0 then we have get the flattening deformation when k equal to 1 we get the trigel then k equal to infinity we get the constriction as Remember, thank you. Remember that when k equal to zero, we will get flattening deformation or flattening ellipsoid. When k equal to one, we will get trigel ellipsoid or that is plane. No, no, no. Yes, plane. We will get plane. Plane is here. And when k equal to infinity, we will get constrictional next slide so when uh, if k equal to 0 all strain ellipsoid are imagery oblate or imagery oblate and we will get the pancake type pancake means uh, pancake flattening ellipsoid prolate oblate ok if uh, If k uh, zero, if k is less than one but greater than zero, if k equal to zero is pancake, pancake flattening. Excuse me. Uh, for mm, if k equal to less than one but greater than zero, it's flattening type. Less than pancake but flatten, flatten but less than pancake. Okay. Then we have the if k equal to 1, it's a plane strain condition. It's plane strain condition. And if <coughs> plane strain, and if uh, k is greater than infinity, I'm sorry, less than infinity, but greater than 1, then we can get the constrictional. <coughs> Constrictional, okay, constrictional. Remember, constrictional, and if k is equal to infinity, then we will get the cigar. So, if k equal to zero, we will get what? k equal to zero, this prolate pancake, pancake. If k is greater than zero, less than one, we will get the flattening. 
if k equal to 1 we will get the plane shear plane strain condition plane strain condition if k is less than infinity greater than 1 we will get the constriction and and if k equal to infinity then we will get the cr shape So, this is the analysis. This is known as progressive. During the deformation of a piece of rock, a particular ro material line is called infinitesimal growth, <coughs> which is after passing through the small stages. <coughs> this is known as progressive deformation. Progressive means by not by a single not by a single shot it's by one by one passing through a small stages of deformation one by one one by one the material line x way in it is after passing through this small stages of deformation and history so here we have the first it's undeformed it incrementally deformed slightly then more then more then more so it's not directly gone from this to this it's from this 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 okay so such deformation such deformation means deformation occurs in this way only it di don't go from a directly to e it progress from point to point okay so next will be this is the same diagram the above figure illustrated that uh, how multiple layer is going to undergo shortening. Shortening while the progressive spacing attaining finally. You can see the first increment is in A, this is B, H, H, and so on. So, increment of strain, so incremental strain. This is how uh, layer specimen undergoes shortening. And multi layer specimen undergoes shortening. Cha cha cha. See, this is this much. If it bulge out, it will be shorter. Much shorter. Much shorter. Much shorter. Okay. It will the in the A from the top to bottom, it will be shortened. See, this is shorten which is height okay shorten and we can see here that when the first increment of strain occurs on a it goes to b let's say b is achieved and when b then c is achieved and g and so those like so and if we go on uh, adding all the increment we will get the finite strain the total strain of that deformed body Equal strain means uh, final strain E equal to L naught original it's elongation. Final strain means total strain total deform minus original is the final strain. Next, next is progressive pure strain. Okay. In the principal strain, do not uh, do not orientation. If the principal strain do not change orientation with time with progressive deformation, it is called irrotational or pure strain. We have already learned that if the principal strain do not orient orient while deformation, then such deformation is known as irrotational or irrotational or pure strain. The figure indicates the behavior of the fine line during progressive deformation in history. The history called as OHL strain history mm -hmm. so see this is the principal axis it's coinciding it goes on coinciding or but the d body is already deformed what is <coughs> deformed to this but it's coinciding until now so such are known as irrotational or pure strain 
this is anyway the behavior of different lines during the progressive deformation this is also known as coachial strain history the figure indicates the behavior of different lines during progressive deformation in history how the uh, deformational history progress from a to b to c it is determined in this in such a history pdf of history is known as coachial strain history next slide now progressive change is rotational so which is rotational non coachial they are coexisting so a coachial strain history which is non coachial strain history the focus of progressive is, is rotation it's it's a principle like this it's not but in coexisting with this it gets a rotated in the rotational strain <coughs> in which the principal strain direction orientation with time during course of progressive deformation okay this uh, changes orientation they carry her <laughs> Ure dhol ne apne bich na sura ko bhi siran. See, this is a progressive change strain and it is a rotational type. Since uh, the, ex, uh, the principal axes are not in a coexisting, not coexisting one by one after deformation, and the history the p the history of such progressive deformation is known as non coaxial strain history next slide so fields now it's this is not important we are going to combine progressive pure stress and progressive shear stress this progressive shear strain this means it progressive pure strain progressive shear strain pure strain and progressive shear strain pure strain and pure strain there is no change in orientation and shear strain there is a change in orientation so what will happen when we combine both since in nature we can't find pure strain and shear strain one on one the nature always combines will get in the combination forms of both in the nature so the combination of progressive pure strain and shear strain can be illustrated as here Pure, it's pure strain is marked first. It's rotational, isn't it? But this is this is this is pure. This is pure one. This is pure. Which gets rotated. One get rotated. One get. One is maintaining its position, but one get rotated. Okay. One is maintaining its position. Mm. One is maintaining its position. Mm. Yes, but too much. But one gets rotated. This is rotated. Such strain. So. in the strain ellipsoid we are now going to the 3d since it is up to 2d strain ellipse we are going to the 3d strain ellipsoid any in at any stage in time during deformation the strain may be represented by two strain ellipsoid a two strain ellipsoid describes the strain up to the time it's known as finite strain ellipsoid finite strain ellipsoid Uh. 
the other the other string which are this is small amount of acha see 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 what is final final means final at any string there the value of string may be represented by two ellipses one string is just called string up to the time called finite string ellipsoid the total string ellipsoid uh which can be obtained by from the difference of total deformation minus no deformation then the other string which is described in small amount which and there is an impose to the next instant it is called incremental string ellipsoid incremental just a bit not the uh, yes progressive like progressive like deformation will get progressive like deformation just a bit just a bit it progress from one point to second point to third point and so on so <coughs> in each three in each this ellipsoid it is possible to define the three fields number a a field in which this lines are initial length initial length the same of certain and when is expanded so in this this ellipsoid so this is the finite one and the finite one we can obtain the finite one by adding all the increments so we know it's known towards the one so in the finite strain we can see that this here uh, see here the uh, here is shortening here is shortening and here you can see, see that there is a extension the first this 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 is this where it is it shortened 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 it is undeformed the other one is the undeformed okay this one and it gets shortened and this is the <coughs> deformed one. Oh, so it's the original one This is very interesting. In which area will it experience the most strain, the least strain, or the intermediate? We will go through this now. See, in most deformation, the principal axis of strain rotates progressively with respect of a material point. <coughs> in most deformation, the principal axis of strain rotate progressively this is the principal rotate principal axis of principal axis and it don't rotate but from this to this no it rotate progressively from one by one by one so progressively and principal axis as finite and incremental ellipsoid <coughs> cannot coincide yes how it may coincide 
find that is the ultimate one and increment just a bit just a bit how it coincide no it will never coincide here superposition of six fields define the four symmetrical n zone level one to three in figure okay the important figure okay let's see so in zone one the line had been extended will be shortened in the next increment in zone one yes it has been extended in zone, so zone two will extend it it's extended when next increment will occur it will be extended extended zone four will be shortened shortened increment but in zone one and zone three what will happen in zone one the lines have been extended the lines are in extended but in the next increment it will get shortened right shortened it's loaded like this okay this this lines with the lines fields have been shortened have been shortened a shorten this but in the next extension it will get extend so in the zone 3 it will get extend in the next increment it will get extend these are the superposition of fs and ir it, uh, it shows that on <coughs> on application of incremental strain how the spheres dimensions will change so i'm going to the next slide so this part is not this so you can see the result zone one result of positive Final strain result of negative final strain. In positive, it will get the extensional, yes, in the C axis, it will get bulge out. zone 2 in zone 2 boundary lines boundary lines are generally formed boundary lines okay zone so actual boundary lines boundary lines and in the zone 4 it is a zone for active four thing zone 4 yes it's shorter it's shorter it will get shorter and shorter active folding zone 2 uh, wow range external uh, external form boundaries boundaries and zone 4 it will active folding ok So this was all about the strain ellipsoid part three analysis. So this is the complete. We have come to the end of this uh, topic analysis of deformation strain ellipsoid theory.